Hello and welcome to the second video on Newton Raphson's method to numerical analysis. Now, in this video, we are going to be looking at um, the Newton Raphson method when an initial guess is not given. Now, let's consider this question. It says find the root of the equation using the Newton's Raphson's method. So you're given y is equal to x cubed minus 5x plus 1. Now we have to find this, but we are not given an initial guess. Now, if you encounter such a question without an initial guess, the first thing you do is you find two points A and B, identify two points A and B such that when you plug this point into the function, f of A is going to either be greater than zero and positive, and and f of B is going to change directly into negative. That means it's going to be less than zero and negative or vice versa so f of a is either positive and then f of b automatically changes from um from positive to negative right or f of a is negative and then when you test for b it changes directly into positive then if you're able to find these two points then your initial guess x naught is then taken as a plus b divided by so that becomes your initial guess. Now let's explain what this means. Now I want to find, of course, the function here is y. So this means that my f of x. So this means that my f of x is simply going to be x to the power of 3 minus 5x plus 1. This becomes f of x. Now we need two points that will transpose this equation from negative directly into positive or from positive directly into negative so you simply say let's a let's start with the very um, smallest value let a be equal to zero now you find f of zero this simply implies f of zero or f of a simply means f of zero plug in the value of x as the value of a in the, into the equation so since a is zero now I have x cubed that becomes 0 to the power of 3 minus 5x that becomes 5 times 0 plus 1. Now 0 to the power of 3 is 0 minus 5 times 0 is 0. I have plus 1. So this simply implies that f of a is actually equal to what? Positive. It's 1 and it is positive. And this is actually greater than 0. Now let, let, let's pick the next point for b. Now, having chosen a to be 0, you can simply say, let b be equal to 1. Pick 1, okay, for b. Most times, too, you can simply um, take it at a scale 0, 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, and so on. But now, let me take a scale of 0, 1, and, and so on, right? Okay, so we now find f of b. Therefore, f of b, f of b is going to now be equal to f of The value of b itself is actually 1. This is going to be equal to x cubed, so x is 1 to the power of 3 minus 5 times 1 plus 1. This is equal to 1 cubed is 1 minus 5 times 1 is 5 plus 1. Now this simply gives us um, minus 3. So this simply implies that f of b itself is negative 3 and this is less than zero and negative so you see the transposition when i pick the first point zero i had positive when i pick the second point as one i had negative so the function changes from from positive directly into negative in that case it means now that the root of the equation lies between zero and one okay hence root lies between 0 and 1 so with this you cannot compute your initial guess okay so your initial guess now becomes initial guess x naught is now going to be remember a plus b divided by 2 this is equal to a is 0 plus b is 1 divided by 2 this simply gives us um, 0 0.5 or yeah 1 over 2 which is 0 0.5 so x naught 
is actually 0 0.5 so this is how you find your initial guess uh, when you're asked to perform Newton Raphson's method without an initial guess now let's do our first iteration so you remember the formula Newton Raphson's method can be represented as x n plus 1 equals x n minus f of x all over f prime of x and i explained this in the previous video now let's pick out our function f of x is giving question itself the function f of x is equal to x cube minus 5x plus 1 now f prime of x simply means differentiate this function so we find f prime of x so we have to differentiate this function if i differentiate x cube i will simply have 3 x squared minus if i differentiate 5x i will simply have 5 so i have this now the next thing to do is find the value now xn now xn like i said in the previous video means the approximation at the given point okay in this case now we found xn that is when n is equal to 0 that give us x not to be equal to 0 0.5 so we are, we are now starting our iteration from when n is equal to 0 so when n equals 0 the equation becomes now xn plus 1 becomes x n is 0 0 plus 1 is simply 1 so you find your first iteration x1 this is going to be equal to xn on the other side of the equation becomes x naught because n is 0 minus f of xn and xn is 0 s naught so you have f of x naught all over f prime of x naught so this means we have to find the function at x naught find the derivative of the function also at x naught so f of x naught f of x naught is going to simply be equal to x naught give us 0 0.5 so that becomes in place of x in the equation putting the value as 0 0.5 so i have x cube which is 0 0.5 to the power of 3 minus 5x which is 5 times 0 0.5 plus 1 so i will compute everything all together just to save time now upon evaluation we have negative 1.375 okay next we find f prime of x naught so which means now plugging the value of x naught into the derivative derivative gave us 3x squared so you have 3 in place of x x is now x naught which is 0 0.5 all squared minus 5 so once again let's point everything together this simply gives us negative 4.25 so we have negative 4.25 now let's plug this into the equation so we find our first iteration x1 is now going to be equal to remember x naught and x naught is 0 0.5 minus f of x naught f of x naught gave us negative 1.375 so in brackets negative 1.3 75 all over f prime of x naught which also give us negative 4.25 so minus 4.25 so this is going to be equal to 0 0.5 minus so you observe that these ratios negative sign cancels out here so i still have this negative sign now let's find 1.375 divide divides 4.25 so when you find this ratio always take it to the at least four decimal places okay so by four decimal places we are going to have 0 0.3235 approximately so you have 0 0.3235 so you evaluate this now and find the value of x1 this is going to be equal to 0 0.5 minus 0 0.3235 that simply gives us 0 0.171765 now just like i explained in the previous video 
we are going to be iterating to see if it is going to convert at least to two decimal place before we can stop our iteration. Now what that means is that I've done the first iteration, I have 0 0.17652, so to two decimal place it is simply 0 0.17. If I carry out the second iteration and I obtain 0 0.17 again repeatedly, then that means the root has converged. So I can simply say the answer lies between any of that value, right? Then I can stop the iteration there. So let's carry out the second iteration. So for the second iteration, it means that n, n is going to be equal to 1. Remember in the first case, n was 0. So for the second iteration, n is equal to 1. And when that happens, that means xn plus 1 becomes x1 plus 1, which is 2. And this is going to be equal to xn becomes x1 minus f of xn becomes f of x1 all over f prime of x1 and you have this so basically what you're not doing is carry the value of the root previous root which you obtained x1 and now plug back into the whole formula and into this equation to obtain the second root it's as simple as that now let's find the value of the function at x1 f of x1 is now going to be equal to remember the equation is x to the power of 3 but x now is x1 x1 is 0 0.1765 so i have 0 0.1765 to the power of 3 minus 5x so minus 5 times x is 0 0.1765 plus 1 so let's do this and see what we are going to obtain um, for this equation. So I'm going to be pointing everything all together. <clears throat> this simply gives us 0 0.1230 approximately. So we have 0 0.1230. Next we'll find the value of the function at its derivative. So f prime of x1. So for the derivative we have 3x squared. So you have 3 x now is 0 0.1765 okay all squared minus 5 so let's see what this gives us once again i'll point everything all together this simply gives us negative 4.9065 so we have negative 4.9065 9065 now you have this we can now easily plug into the equation so if we do that, we'll find the second root. x2 is equal to x1 is 0 0.1765 minus f of x1 gave us 0 0.1230. 0 0.1230 all over f prime of x1 gave us negative 4.9065. So this is going to be equal to 0 0.1765 plus. So you observe that the two negative signs cancel out. I have a negative sign here. I have this negative sign here. So they become plus. Now let's find this ratio. 0 0.1230 divides 4.9065. So this gives us 0 0.0251. Okay. Now, this simply implies we can now find the value of the second iteration x2 to be equal to. Let's find, let's evaluate and see 0 0.1765 plus that result. So, this simply gives us 0 0.2016. 0 0.2016. Once again, if you compare this result to the previous result, you see that they are not even close to being converging. x1 is 0 0.1765. And x to 0 0.2016, not close to conversion. So you carry out the third iteration. So for the third iteration, that means n is now going to be equal to 2. So when n equals 2, xn plus 1 becomes <coughs> x2 plus 1, which is x3. This is going to be equal to xn becomes x2 okay minus minus f of x2 
all over f prime of x2 so now we find the value of the function at x2 so we simply find f of x2 this is going to be equal to remember the function x cubed minus 5x plus 1 so x now is standing for x2 and x2 is 0 0.2016 so i have 0 0.2016 to the power of 3 minus 5 multiply 0 0.2016 okay plus one so let's evaluate all and see our result so this gives us approximately 0 0.0002 so remember you must always take it to four decimal place next we'll find the derivative of the function at that point so f prime of x2 remember that give us 3x squared so you have 3x is 0 0.2016 all squared minus 5 so let's also see what this gives to us so this gives us negative 4.8781 so we have negative 4.8781 now you simply plug into the equation and find the third up uh, the third root so x3 is now equal to x2 is 0 0.2016 minus f of x2 that gives us 0 0.0002 divided by f prime of x2 gives us negative 4.8781 so this is equal to 0 0.2016 now this becomes positive because the negative signs there cancels out so let's find this ratio so i have 0 0.0002 divides 4.8781 so that gives us approximately zero right because i have correct with four decimal place i have 0 0.0000 so it must be four and if you add these two together, this is going to give you 0 0.2016. So this simply implies that x3 is equal to 0 0.2016. So you compare x3 and x2, see that the roots completely um, converged into four decimal place. So that means the answer to this question is what? 0 0.2016. That's the root of the given equation. Alright, yeah, so that's how to employ Newton Raphson's method without an initial guess. In the next video, we are going to be looking into trigonometric functions involving the use of Newton Raphson's method without an initial guess. I'm sure you want to be a part of that video, so do well to smash the subscribe button right now and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss out on that video when it drops. In the meantime, do well to like this video, share to your friends, comment nicely. I will see you in the next video. Thanks.